Philo then, having divided the whole work of San Cuniathan into nine books, in the introduction to the first book makes this preface concerning San Cuniathan, word for word. These things being so, San Cuniathan, who was a man of much learning and great curiosity, and desirous of knowing the earliest history of all nations from the creation of the world, searched out with great care the history of Taurus, knowing that of all men under the sun Taurus was the first who thought of the invention of letters, and began the writing of records, and he laid the foundation, as it were, of his history, by beginning with him, whom the Egyptians called Thoth, and the Alexandrians Thoth, translated by the Greeks into Hermes. After these statements he finds fault with the more recent authors as violently and untruly reducing the legends concerning the gods to allegories and physical explanations and theories. And so he goes on to say, But the most recent of the writers on religion rejected the real events from the beginning, and having invented allegories and myths, and formed a fictitious affinity to the cosmical phenomena, established mysteries, and overlaid them with a cloud of absurdity, so that one cannot easily discern what really occurred. But he having lighted upon the collections of secret writings of the Ammonites which were discovered in the shrines and of course were not known to all men, applied himself diligently to the study of them all, and when he had completed the investigation, he put aside the original myth and the allegories, and so completed his proposed work, until the priests who followed in later times wished to hide this way again, and to restore the mythical character from which time mysticism began to rise up, not having previously reached the Greeks. Next to this he says, These things I have discovered in my anxious desire to know the history of the Phoenicians, and after a thorough investigation of much matter, not that which is found among the Greeks, for that is contradictory, and compiled by some in a contentious spirit rather than with a view to truth. And after other statements, and the conviction that the facts were as he has described them came to me, on seeing the disagreement among the Greeks, concerning which I have carefully composed three books bearing the title Paradoxical History. And again after other statements he adds, But with a view to clearness hereafter, and the determination of particulars, it is necessary to state distinctly beforehand that the most ancient of the barbarians, and especially the Phoenicians and Egyptians, from whom the rest of mankind received their traditions, regarded as the greatest gods those who had discovered the necessaries of life, or in some way done good to the nations. Esteeming these as benefactors and authors of many blessings, they worshipped them also as gods after their death, and built shrines, and consecrated pillars and staves after their names. These the Phoenicians held in great reverence, and assigned to them their greatest festivals. Especially they applied the names of their kings to the elements of the cosmos, and to some of those who were regarded as gods. But they knew no other gods than those of nature, sun, and moon, and the rest of the wandering stars, and the elements and things connected with them, so that some of their gods were mortal and some immortal. Philo, having explained these points in his preface, next begins his interpretation of San Cuniathan by setting forth the theology of the Phoenicians. The first principle of the universe he supposes to have been air dark with cloud and wind, or rather a blast of cloudy air, and a turbid chaos dark as Erebus, and these were boundless and for long ages had no limit. But when the wind, says he, became enamored of its own parents, and a mixture took place, that connection was called desire. This was the beginning of the creation of all things, but the wind itself had no knowledge of its own creation. From its connection what was produced, which some say is mud, and others a putrescence of watery compound, and out of this came every germ of creation and the generation of the universe.